Chan Hongo was born in China, the only child of parents who were both principal dancers for the National Ballet of China. But when her family immigrated to Vancouver, her parents' fame and their comfortable life were left behind. Definitely my greatest challenge was the language barrier um, and getting accustomed to the way of life here in Canada. Um, I didn't speak a word of English. I started with my ABCs and coming here, I knew nothing. Everything was strange to me. As I understand it, she went to a school where there weren't too many Asian children. And so she was um, more or less far flung from her roots. Like her parents, Chan loved to dance. She tirelessly practiced, despite their belief that she didn't have the body type or the coordination to ever become a successful ballerina. At 16, Chan surprised everyone by entering the most important competition in the world for young dancers, the Prix de Lausanne. I'd heard so much about this prestigious competition where um, students under the age of 18 go to compete and it's the best from all over the world. So we're talking about the Royal Ballet, the uh, um, American Ballet Theatre, the Paris Opera. And here I was, um, a Chinese girl coming from Vancouver, trained by her parents. That year, in front of a stunned audience, little Chan Han Go won the coveted top prize. From then on, she soared, overcoming every barrier and racial stereotype that came her way as she tried to find a place in this Western art form. In 1988, she was chosen to join the National Ballet of Canada and just six years later became a principal dancer. This marked a first for the National, the debut of the only Chinese principal dancer the company had ever had. The first time I saw Chan dance, I thought I was watching truly an ethereal figure. She seemed to have no bones, no spine, and she seemed to float through the air. She's simply one of the great, greatest classical ballerinas this country has ever produced. Chan is also a principal dancer at the Suzanne Farrell Ballet Kennedy Center for the Performing Arts in Washington, D.C., is a frequent guest artist with companies all over the world and teaches ballet masterclasses to students across Canada. As a ballerina, Chan's life is one of discipline, with intensive rehearsals and demanding performances. Yet she still finds ways to contribute to the community she treasures so much. She established a scholarship fund that provides tuition for promising ballet students. She acts on countless boards, chairs fundraisers, and makes appearances at charity events. The schedule is as relentless as her commitment. I enjoy very much giving back to the community because um, this is where I live and this is where I like to spend my time and you know it's very important to me to be able to give back and make this an even better place for future generations. Unlike other ballerinas whose whole life is devoted to the dance, she's gone on to do incredibly um, incredible things. She's a producer, she is an entrepreneur, she's a businesswoman, she is an artistic director. It's amazing what she has shown beyond the life of a dancer while maintaining a dance career. For the past eight years, Chan has operated her own business, Principal Shoes, a company that designs and markets dance shoes, and her autobiography, Beyond the Dance, has been shortlisted for the Norma Fleck Award for children's nonfiction because of its positive message about the immigrant experience. It just makes me think that there's so much more that I need to do and, and this is, again, just another vote of confidence for me to continue doing what I'm doing.